All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Anderson for Keller Community College. And in this second video where we're going to look at the Unit 4 test for uh, statistics, we're going to focus in on a graph um, that we can make uh, from some data here. And we're going to look at the psychological study of homework habits and grades in college math class. Plot the following data points and label the x and y axis correctly. All right, so what we have here is some data, fictitious data that I made up of hours of homework worked per week and the uh, math grade. Um, now what you're going to notice is that some of your worksheets differ slightly from this. Um, they will be changed in the future and some of the newer tests might have some of these extra questions on them. But for now, just kind of follow along. You'll see these are about 95% similar to what you may have downloaded and looked at already. If you notice any differences, um, I would have to say that they will probably all go live in the fall of 2016. Or for my face-to-face -face classes, they will be beta tested in the spring and the summer. Uh, but for online students, spring and summer 16, um, the old forms would be fine. But what we're about to do is we're about to plot some points of homework per week in math grade, and we're going to do so on this grid. Now one of the limitations I have in making these videos is that if I bring any external thing to the screen, all the writing goes away. So in fact, instead of plotting the points first like we normally would, and then drawing the line through the data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, put everything into the calculator first, and then doing all the tech work so we can see how things worked out. Now, what I'm, uh, what you would normally do is start off with a clean calculator and hit stat enter, and then in list one, you would type in the data from the first list, which is usually your X, and then in list two, uh, your stuff from your Y. Now, what's important about this is that I, I've already like loaded these in, so I have my 12 data points in my uh, list one for X, and 12 data points listed in here for y. So what I'm about to do is now the shortcut to get me the r value um, so we don't have to calculate r by hand and that's on a separate assignment or an in-class extra credit project uh, that you might get to do. Um, but let's now use the calculator to generate the r by going stat right and then move down to the eighth option for linear regression. Now I prefer this option, the a plus bx instead of ax plus b. Now I know this is the slope intercept form of slope x plus the y intercept, but I prefer this method because the start is actually the start. The a is the start and the b is the slope. Um, and, and in all of my videos and all of my worksheets and in most of the books, they choose slope and y intercept in this form where the uh, y intercept is first. And um, this will be important when we actually translate the y prime uh, why I prefer using this. Now on the newer calculators you'll have some settings and you'll have to hit enter a bunch of times to hit calculate but on these older calculators you just have to hit enter twice and there you have your A and your B. Now here's something you'll notice that the R value and the R squared value um, is not on on this calculator. Well your default setting on most of these calculators is your diagnostics are off we need to be able to turn that on. And once you do that, you can see your R and R squared for every single linear regression problem that you do. To turn your R on, you would click second and zero for catalog. Now, one of the options is to scroll down until you get to the diagnostic on. But you'll notice that there is a little D above this, mate, of this uh, root button right here. So if I click on this, it takes me right to the Ds. And I'm looking for a diagnostic on. So I'm going to put my arrow to diagnostic on and hit enter twice and that turns on my diagnostics. Now if I run through the stat, right, and then scroll down to 8 and hit enter, and again on the newer calculators you have a calculate screen here where you just have to hit enter a bunch of times. And that will get you to your same A and B or slope and Y intercept of the problem, but now you have your R and R squared. The R is the correlation coefficient and the R squared is the coefficient of determination. We're not going to use the R squared for this page, but we will use the R for our correlation coefficient. So I'm going to switch over to the pen and that freezes the screen so I can no longer change it. But now I can go back and do some of the things we might do first, which is label your X and Y axis. Um, the corner is always going to be zero for the easy, these easy problems that we're going to be covering. And my X is going to be hours of homework per week. 
Now we're going to look at the increments by ones because our highest hours of homework per week is 10 and if we go by ones we can easily see if there is a relationship between doing homework and getting good math grades. Now on the y-axis this would be our math grade in percentage. And the math grade in percentage um, the highest math grade that someone earned in the table above was 100, so it looks like we're going to do this just like so. It looks like my X scale is best by tens, and that way I can easily put my data up onto the board there. Um, so we go, first of all, with the person who worked 7 hours and got a 90%. Then we have 5 and 70. Then we have 8 and 80 then we have 7 and 90 and you'll notice that this is my second 7 and 90 and sometimes people ask for a tally mark or a tick mark there but I'm gonna remember there was two here and I'll kind of put that back on at the end if I need it 10 was 100 what you'll notice is that your calculator won't have any indication there it'll just be an overlapping dot 6 and 40 4 and 10 well that's not so good 10 percent's not great 6 and 70 7 and 80, 8 and 80, which this is the second 8 and 80 to occur here. Um, so we're going to move on again and take a look at the last two, which is 10 and 90 and 0 and 10, way over here on this side. Now, one of the older questions was, um, draw a line, or actually it's right here A, I'm sorry, it's kind of partly cut off. It says draw a line through the data you think models the relationship between homework and math grades the best. Well this is where you're going to have to guess, is it a positive, is it a no correlation, or is it a negative line? Well this is definitely going to be a positive line and you just for part A just have to, you know, kind of just for a question similar to that, just have to draw uh, a line that you know best fits the data. It's going to be straight, it's not going to connect the dots and make a zigzag pattern. That's just going to be the best that it is. Now we've done part B to find their linear regression line and there's all the data that we're going to use. The A is going to be 4.51, the B is going to be 9.69, the Y prime line or the line of best fit is 4.51 plus 9.69 X and the R in this case is 0.85. Now, um, unfortunately what's going to happen is that I'm going to move the screen and all of this is going to disappear. So you may want to copy any of this down that you don't have written down yet. But this is going to allow me to actually translate the Y prime and actually talk about how I would get this into the calculator and show a teacher. Now, part D, or a question like part D, would only be if you were in the face-to-face -face classes. If you are taking this class online at the approved testing center, um, your proctor is not going to know the difference between this graph and another one. So um, online students, you get out of this one, um, but you should, you should really know how to do this. But my face-to-face -face students, you'll have to show this physically to me on your calculator. And uh, first we're going to do some translation here. The translating of this Y prime, and I want to freeze the calc again, and get back to a pen and remind us what was that y prime line. The y prime was this equation of y equals 4.51 plus 9.69x. So translating the y prime into a sentence, it kind of we're going to read this from left to right. We're going to read this from left to right and say you begin at 4.51 and I'm going to look at my Y units here. My Y units were was a math grade in percentage. So we begin at 4.51 percent at at um, if I was to draw the line. So if this is moving, if this was the 10 and that was the zero, then 4.51 would be about right here. Now the calculator is going to do this for us, but I want you to see how I'm translating this into um, a sentence. I begin at 4.51 percent and add, see because of the addition symbol here, 9.69 percent for every, and in this case I need my x units here because these um, 
two values were in y units, and since this is some x, this is gonna have to be some x unit. So in this case, our x unit was in hours of studying math. So for every, and since this went by one, uh, this is for every hour of math. So I start off at 4.51% and go up 9.69, so almost 10 units or 10% for one hour of studying and create my straight line. And you're gonna see that this is gonna continue on and on off the screen, but it's gonna make a really nice line through the data points. The one that you freehanded is gonna look pretty sweet on the calculator. Now, what's important to know is that most of the time when you get your calculator, and you're supposed to, you're gonna to wanna to try to do this, right? You're gonna to wanna to try to get all this on the calculator. What's unfortunate is a lot of you have your graph set up like this. For the test, if you're going to show this to me, you're gonna want your window to match exactly like the window that's on your worksheet. And I mean exactly, because there's a way to zoom, use a function here to kind of cheat your way through the window, but I want the window to be exactly the same. I don't want the calc to do it, I want you to do it. So your x minimum is gonna be at zero, and your y x maximum is gonna be at 10, because remember our highest data point was 10, and the x scale is one. Our y minimum is gonna be zero, our y maximum is gonna be 100, and the y scale is going to be 10. Don't mess with any settings below this. It is not necessary. But what this will do is give us a beautiful graph and, oh shoot, no dots. Well, what I'm gonna have to do is click on the y equals and turn the dots on. It just so happens that the plot one by default is set to scatter plot. So most of the time I should be able to just hit enter and hit graph and the dots will show up. You'll notice that some dots are cut off a little bit. That's because these dots are, are squares and they get kind of cut off by the short limitations of the window. I wouldn't mess around with that. So your window matches exactly the window that you put on the piece of paper and there's the graph, but where's the line? Well, the line, we can go back to the y equals, and I want you to hand type in that number. And again, there's a way for the calc to be do the work for you, but darn it, I'd like you to do some of this work yourself. So this is gonna be 4.51 plus 9.69 x, and then show this to me. Now during the test, I can tell you what you're missing, but I can't tell you how to get it. Like I can tell you, hey, your dots are wrong, or hey, your window's not set up correctly. Um, you can try to adjust those things, but I can't give you any help in doing that. You will show this to me and get the little check or a circle if you missed part of it. So there's something nice for you to see. Now let's get back to the non-calculator side of this work, and I think I will put this, um, I'll just shove it down here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to look at uh, let's just put a little happy check here. Pew! All right, so what does the R value tell you? Now, if you have the R table in front of you, that's great. Um, you can actually compare your table value to your R value and make a, a judgment. But if you have no table I in front of you, you're gonna have to do a little gut check to tell me whether it's strong positive, weak positive, strong negative, or weak negative. Uh, in this case, 0.86, what I would guess is this would be strong positive. I want you to have kind of a gut check guess about whether something is strong or weak positive because a lot of times when people are throwing R values and correlations at you on Facebook and other places, um, you don't have access to the statistics, the sample size of the chart. So I want you to just get a good gut feeling that if your R value would be a good grade then consider it strong. So A's and B's are definitely strong positive. Um, negative 80's and negative 90's would be strong negative. But I'd say anywhere between, shoot, you know, just to be a little bit linear on this thing, if it's below 70%, it would be weak, um, you know, from zero to 70% would be weak positive, and from negative zero to negative 70% would also be weak negative. But again, on this test, I'm not gonna try to trick you. I'm not gonna have something right on the edge. It's gonna be a super slam dunk for strong positive or weak positive or negative or strong negative. You're, you'll really be able to figure it out. Now, what happens if table I is in front of you? Now, what I would do is maybe go to your book since table I is not on your standard formula sheet, but go to your t book and find table I and go try to look up the R 
value, minimum required R value for this. We always should assume that alpha is 0.05 unless otherwise stated. But what you really should ask yourself is, what about your degrees of freedom? We had 12 data points, so your degrees of freedom for this is going to be n minus 2 because we had an x and a y. So you should look up 10 degrees of freedom under 5% alpha, and you will get a value of plus or minus 0.5. 576. That means if we needed something over a 57.6%, which we definitely had, to show that this is a strong, strong, strong positive uh, relationship between the two. Now the hypotheses for a um, scatter plot is going to be your null hypothesis is rho is equal to zero, and your alternative is going to be rho is not equal to zero. Rho equals zero is a way of a Greek letter for saying R is zero. So the null hypothesis that negative person who says there's no correlation, and yeah, it would, he would sound like that, right? Um, that no correlation person right there would be rho equals zero. But the the alternative to that hypothesis is someone saying no, 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 there is a correlation. Rho can't be zero because there is a correlation. So that's why we had to put a plus minus on the 0.576 because this is a two-tailed test. Um, now, what we're about to do is run um, something separate below this, because if we did just this basically table IP test evaluation, we would see that the R value just had to be above 57.6, which it definitely was, it was in the 80s, so we would reject the null hypothesis because on a continuum between 0 and 1 and negative 1, that line at negative 0.576 and 0.576, this shaded area right there, if it's in the shaded region, we would definitely reject the null hypothesis, and it was, it was like 86%. Or if it was down here, we would reject as well. So yeah, man, there is a relationship. We cannot say that the null hypothesis is correct here. So we are going to reject the null hypothesis and say, yeah, yeah, there is a strong positive correlation between um, doing homework and getting you know good math grades uh, probably because your math teacher gives points to math homework that's kind of going to influence that but now what we're going to do for these two parts here is we're going to actually run a t-test so um, starting off with and notice I just moved my line here to be a little annoying so we're going to have the you know row equals zero and here for the alternative row is not equal to zero we're going to figure out our degrees of freedom using a t-test. Now the t-test has n minus 1, so our degrees of freedom isn't actually, um, my degrees of freedom um, is, oh sorry, I, I misspoke here. Um, when we do our t-test, we still do n minus 2, so we have 10 degrees of freedom. And, and the degrees of freedom is based on the scatter plot is always n minus 2. You'll see when we do chi-square distribution later on, we'll back, back to n minus 1 again like we did for our t-tests. But our critical values, if we look at a two-tail test, so two-tail on our chart with an alpha of 0.05 is going to give us a plus or minus 1.812. So um, on our normal curve, what we're looking for is we're looking for our data to reject the null hypothesis to be more than 1.812 standard deviations away from the norm or negative 1.812 standard deviations away from the norm. So we're looking to be in these shaded regions. So what we have to do is run our t-test and our t-test is equal to r times the square root of n minus 2. Hey look, n minus 2. Um, divided by 1 minus r squared, and please make sure you use a parenthesis there because if you make a mistake typing that in, you're going to be in trouble. So my r is going to be 0.85, my numerator is going to be 12 minus 2 or 10. I'll show you some simplification here maybe later. No, I guess I won't. I'll just hope that you get this typed in correctly. So this is 1 minus parenthesis 0.85 quantity squared. And, and the reason why I use parenthesis because your R value could be negative and you, your calculator will not process the problem right if you don't have the parentheses. Now what I would do is I would do these in, in stages. I would do your denominator first, your 1 minus 0.85 in parenthesis squared. 
And then when you get that answer, take 10 and divide it by that answer. Take the square root of the answer and then multiply it by 0.85. You'll realize when you get that done, your t is equal to about 5.1. And 5.1 is way bigger than 1.82. So therefore, what we can do is we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And we're going to reject the null hypothesis because um, 5.1 was greater than 1.812. I'll just put b slash c for because. Um, and, and that right there, I could have also written it as 1.812 is less than 5.1. That right there helps us with this t-test. Um, so what I've shown you on this page is I've shown you how to get the R value on your calculator. I've shown you how to do some estimation or guesstimation. I've also shown you how to um, do a p-test and a t-test. Coming to the same conclusion, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. It, there is a relationship between doing homework and math grade, right? Right? <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching.